Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome back. Thank you for part 11 of this um, series on the Residential Purchase Agreement or RPA. So we are going to talk about, um, we left off on the buyer right to cancel part of it. So um, yeah, there's what's called a good faith exercise of any buyer contingency. So basically what that means is if their loan, let's say they're, they're on their loan contingency, they have 17 days. Um, let's say that they uh, are not gonna get approved for whatever reason, uh, or they need more time. You can extend the contingencies or you can cancel based on that contingency. Um, but if you notice here, uh, notice of buyer or seller to perform, it does explain what that document is. So it just says the notice to buyer to perform or uh, to, for the seller be in writing, by, um, be signed by the applicable buyer or seller and give the other party at least two days, like I said, 48 hours uh, after delivery or until the time specified. So you can make it longer. So let's say it's a weekend and they're out of town and you're like, you know what, I'll give them three days. Um, it's Saturday, so I'll give them till Tuesday. You can do that, um, but two days uh, is is uh, where it, it stands. So, um, so I want to talk about effect of removal of contingency. So removal of buyer contingency. If the buyer removes any contingency, well, this is this section, section F one right here. If the buyer removes any contingency or cancellation rights, unless otherwise agreed, the buyer shall conclusively be deemed to have completed all buyer investigations and review of reports and other appl applicable information and disclosures pertaining to that contingency or cancellation right, elected to proceed with the transaction and assumed all liability, responsibility, and expense for the non-delivery of any reports, disclosures, or information outside of seller's control and for any repairs or corrections pertaining to that contingency or cancellation right or for the inability to obtain financing. So any of the contingencies on there, guys, once it's removed, the buyer, that basically tells the seller and the listing agent, you know what, this buyer is good to go, they've agreed to remove the contingency and they're done with that contingency. That doesn't mean that after that contingency, you can go back and say, well, I want, uh, I want uh, you know, the, the counter repl replaced because of whatever damage it had. You had your chance at that time. That's not how it works, right? So um, there's a lot of factors that go into this. Uh, so, you know, I would review with your broker or your team leader if you have one uh, as far as these situations go. There's a ton of situations out there. So um, it changes from property to property. Uh, demand to close escrow is also there. After, after a notice to perform, just so you guys know, what happens is if you're out of contract, so meaning if let's say escrow closed was supposed to close yesterday right thursday or friday whatever day it is friday and today is monday now and it closed, was supposed to close friday you can send out what's called a demand to close escrow sometimes you don't need a notice to perform um, check with your broker on that but what will happen is the the demand to close escrow basically says you guys need to close escrow right now um, so just like it says here, before the buyer or seller may cancel this agreement for failure to other to the other party to close the escrow, right? Buyer or seller must first deliver uh, to the other party a demand to close escrow. As a buyer, you can also force the sale. Don't forget that. So it needs to be signed by the applicable buyer or seller and give to the party at least three days after delivery to close of escrow. A DCE may be delivered any earlier than three days prior to the scheduled performance day of the close of escrow. So. Uh, if your escrow is supposed to close on Friday, you can deliver it as early as Tuesday or Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, right? Um, if the DEC, DCE is incorrectly delivered or specifies a time less than the above time frame, it shall be deemed invalid and void and seller or buyer shall require to deliver a new one. So uh, that's important to know, guys. So um, just understand that. Then we have the effect of cancellation on deposits. If the seller or buyer or buyer seller gives written notice of cancellation, Pursuant to rights duly exercised under the terms of this agreement, the parties agree to sign and deliver a mutual instruction to cancel the, cancel the sale and the escrow and release the deposits. If any to the party entitled to the funds, less fees costs uh, paid by the escrow holder or on behalf of the party is required to, by this agreement and any escrow cancellation fees charged to that party, fees and costs may be mutually signed release instructions to the parties. Um, but it also says after a party may be subject to civil penalty of up to a thousand dollars 
for refusal to sign cancellation instructions if no good faith dispute exists as to which party is entitled to deposited funds okay consult with your attorney on that honestly guys like we have we have legal um services through uh car and nar so go go use that free legal advice go talk to uh, an attorney about what this means. Uh, I am certainly not an attorney and I don't want to, um, you know, give you advice on something that I may not know about because every situation is different. Remember, every transaction is different in its own way, right? So you may have, uh, this may be applying to your transaction, it may not apply. So there you go. Repairs, uh, we all know, and if you didn't know, repairs should be fixed um, and um, completed before the final verification, so a final walkthrough of the buyer. So if, you, if the seller hasn't um, uh, had the repairs done and you as a buyer, you can postpone the final walkthrough until that's done. So that's, that's in there. Final walkthrough, again, buyers shall have the right to make a final verification of property condition within the time specified in paragraph 3J, not as a contingency of the sale, okay, but solely to confirm that the property is maintained, repairs have been completed as agreed, and the seller has completed the seller's uh, other obligations. So if your seller has uh, you know, all kinds of debris and trash and personal items in the garage and whatever, and it hasn't been, um, they haven't been taken out, then obviously you're, you're not gonna do your final walkthrough and, and so on, so there you go. All right, broker and agents, compensation, scope of duty, so compensation, uh, this talks about a seller or buyer or both are as uh, applicable agree to pay compensation to a broker as specified in a separate written agreement between broker and the seller or buyer. Compensation is payable upon close of escrow or if escrow does not close as otherwise specified in the agreement between uh, broker and that seller or buyer. So scope of duty, uh, they, they both acknowledge and, and agree that agent does not decide what price the buyer should pay. So this kind of talks about, again, you have the responsibility to protect your buyer. So you're not deciding what the offer should be. So if it's, you know, that pandemic time or whatever, and it's a hot market and you know that, um, you know, the price is uh, 400 and you, you want the buyer, you know, you know, you need to offer 450 because that's, that's the price that's going to get you in. Don't do that because if your buyer's not comfortable with that, then you're doing them a disservice and you're really not being ethical at that point. So don't do that. Um, <clears throat> does not decide what, what they should um, offer, does not decide what the seller should accept, does not guarantee the condition of the property, does not guarantee the performance, adequacy, um, completeness of inspection, services, products, repairs. So remember, you are not, you are just the realtor guiding your buyer to purchase this home. You're guiding them to make sure that they are the ones satisfied and they are the ones that are guaranteeing everything on the home. You are only a, a guide. You are the professional here. Um, look at five. It says, shall not be responsible for identifying defects of the property in common areas or offsite unless such defects are visibly observable by an inspection or reasonably accessible area. Um, so look at seven. Shall not be responsible for identifying the location, boundary lines, or other items affecting title. Okay. So if they say, well, where, you know, which fence line is my, my, you know, my property line, I, you know what, I'm not sure. Let me get you a tax map. Let me get you a plot map. And if you need be, have the buyer, especially with land, have the buyer pay for a survey to be done on the property because that's part of their due diligence, you know, or ask for it to be done by the seller in the contract. They may say no to that, but you know, it is what it is. Um, so these are all the things that you should not be responsible for. So please, please agents, please be uh, mindful of this, okay? Um, and again, if you have questions, um, consult you know, our free legal advice through Car Legal, okay? Um, joint es escrow instructions and escrow holder, this is, a, this is just explaining all of that. I would, uh, if you have questions on this, you can definitely ask, but I would talk to your escrow company on these. Um, selection of service providers, uh, agents do not guarantee the performance of any vendors, services, or product providers whether referred by agent or selected buyer or seller in person. Buyer and seller may select any providers of their own choosing. Providers being even a home inspection company. You know, we have our own, you know, preferred home inspection company, but if the seller, I mean, if the buyer's like, no, you know what? I always use Elite and I want Elite and you like Housemaster or vice versa or whoever. Um, you know, ultimately it's the buyer's choice. It's not your choice. You have, you can give suggestions. Here's two or three, um, which one would you like? And then some, most of the time buyers will ask, you know, if there's any buyers watching, you'll ask, 
well what do you think which ones have you used that have done a good job so uh, just be mindful of that and and uh, and just you know protect yourself and protect your buyer okay uh, Multiple listing service uh, agents are authorized to report to the MLS that an offer has been accepted. So this talks about changing your status. So you know, obviously, um, you know, we change it to pending when an offer has been accepted, and you, we open escrow sold when it's sold, and so on. Um, assignment equal housing opportunity. The property is sold in compliance with federal, state law, and anti-discrimination laws. And of course, we have the fair housing uh, disclosure we talked about in uh, I believe the first or second video. Uh, maybe third I don't remember now um, so definitions and instructions so these are definitions of these words right so if you're an agent watching this you would have learned this during your schooling when you got your license but these are all words of what ex uh, acceptance agent agreement as is all this means now as is is interesting because seller shall disclose known material facts and defects as specified in this agreement uh, in this agreement, buyer has the right to inspect the property and within the time specified, request that seller make repairs or take other corrective action or exercise uh, any contingency cancellation rights in this agreement. Seller is only required to make repairs specified in this agreement or as otherwise agreed. So, you know, property sold as is, you're always going to see that. Um, property sold as is just means, look, you know what, the seller is not willing to make any repairs, um, you know, but in most cases, if the appraiser calls stuff out, again, that can be negotiated. And again, it doesn't take the buyer's right away to have a request for repair or even perform their due diligence. That's their right. This is just stating what the as is means, but the, the buyer can still come out and say, well, I want you to fix X, Y, and Z. And the seller may say, you know what, I'm going to fix X, but not the other two. So. Um, that's all part of it too. So read through this, read through these definitions. Beyond this, we have terms and conditions. We're almost there. We're on page 14 now. Uh, I'm going to stop it here. Um, page 14 just talks about mediation, liquidated damages, um, arbitration and disputes. This, you know, this page I would definitely talk to uh, your broker about and I would, um, you know kind of go from there with that or again you have legal advice we have car legal it's free you can go in there you tell you tell them on the phone you specify the situation um, and then you specify what's happening and then the, an attorney calls you and they answer all those questions for free so that's really big uh, for now guys thank you so much be sure to like and subscribe I really appreciate you guys stopping by and watching the video let's get these views up and let's share it with other people Hopefully it helps. Uh, talk to you guys soon. Have a great day and we'll see you on the next one.